Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and hydrology. We are discussing on runoff and the hydrographic analysis. Well, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about what is runoff, what are the types of runoff and the factors that affect the runoff process. Okay. In today's lecture, we will discuss about the process from rainfall to the runoff. Okay. So, uh, for the rainfall runoff process, well, before runoff occurs, the precipitation must satisfy the demand of evaporation, interception, infiltration, uh, then uh, surface drainage, surface detention, and the channel detentions. Well, if we look on the process of rainfall to the runoff, if we distribute the total rainfall in different different categories that that water that amount of water of uh, rainfall is distributed in the interception uh, in the infiltration also uh, some amount of water get evaporated some amount of water uh, is considered as a uh, excessive precipitation which leads to the surface drainage uh, also some amount of water uh, goes to the channel detentions okay now when the rain falls a part of it get intercepted by the vegetations some of it is stored as the depression on the ground surface and such amount of water or such amount of storage is known as the depression storage which later infiltrates or get evaporates some amount of the rain is absorbed by the water is absorbed by the soil if the rain continues further the water starts infiltrating into the surface soil and if the rate of rainfall is in an excessive manner okay or we can say the rate of rainfall exceeds the infiltration rate then that amount of excessive water that start collecting that particular water on the surface and that will lead to the surface detention or we can say the surface flow now this water flows over the land and then it joins the streams or the river or we can say the ocean well this overland flow is generally known as the surface runoff now the water which percolates without joining the water table and then flows below the ground surface and then it joins the stream or the river that kind of flow is known as the subsurface flow okay and that is considered as the part of surface runoff or we can say the excessive precipitation okay now the water that percolates to the ground water table and then later or after the long time it joins other river or the stream that is known as the water flow or the base flow this uh, kind of flow generally occurs uh, when there is a very low rainfall okay so that uh, small amount of water takes much time to get into the soil surface or to infiltrate into the soil surface and that's why that water sometimes stored in the ground and that amount of water is generally known as the base flow so this all waters are at last joins the stream or the river and that amount of water is generally is considered as the total runoff at the outlets and outlets yeah, is a kind of a source or like uh, ocean river or lake okay so this was about the runoff process now we will discuss about a drainage basin characteristics so before starting discussing about the characteristics first of all we should know what is drainage basin well the entire area of a river basin whose surface runoff due to the storms that drains into a river 
or a river basin is considered as the hydrologic unit and this hydrologic unit is known as the drainage basin also this drainage basin considered as the watershed or we can say the catchment area of the river flowing this is the schematic diagram of a watershed or we can say the drainage basin or the catchment area well the unit for the catchment area is in kilometer square the runoff is considerably affected by some characteristics of the drainage basin those are size of drainage basin its shape the surface of the basin its orientation altitude topography and the geology of the drainage basin so these are the main characteristics of drainage basin well uh, we will discuss uh, each and every characteristics of the drainage basin the first is virgin flow now virgin flow means the stream flow that unaffected by any artificial diver is known as the virgin flow that means there is only a one path to flow there is no any sub branches that is known as the virgin flow which is not connected with any other streams now the second is the overland flow well the part of runoff which flows over the land surface towards the river channel that is known as the overland flow the third that is stream flow now the overland flow plus other components of flow that forming the total runoff of the river is known as the stream flow the fourth characteristics that is the direct runoff what is direct runoff the part of runoff which enters the stream quickly after the rainfall or the snow melting that is known as the direct runoff the fifth is yield the yield of drainage is same as runoff that is with the only difference that this yield is expressed over a long period while the runoff is expressed for a limited period of time the fifth is divide lines or we can say the drainage divides well the boundary line along the topographic ridge that is separating two adjacent drainage basin that is known as the drainage divide the the next is concentration point okay now what is concentration point a single point or a location at which all the surface drainage from a basin comes together or the concentrates as the outflow from the basin that stream channel is known as the concentration point or we can say uh, measuring point well the next is time of concentration the time of concentration of a drainage basin is the time required by the water to reach the outlet from the most remote point of the drainage area okay here uh, by the water to reach at the outlet that outlet is nothing but the concentration point from where all the branches are coming together and then it moves in a single lane okay ninth is stream order all non branching tributaries whether they enter the mainstream or the branches are termed as the first order stream then the stream which receives only non branching tributaries are of second order streams then the streams of the third order are formed by the junctions of those two streams of the second order and so on the next that is the drainage density well drainage density is expressed as the total length of the streams 
of all the orders those divided by the basin areas well uh, if we considered uh, a d value as the drainage density and l as the total length of the stream and if we consider the basin area as a, a then the density of drainage would be equal to the ratio of total length of that stream channel that is to the area of the basin now total length would be in meter or the kilometer same way the area would be of meter square or kilometer square now so this is a measure of closeliness of spacing of the stream channels well the lower drainage density that indicates there is a poor drainage density the next is stream density well stream density is the ratio of the number of streams in a catchment and the catchment area that in kilometer square now same way if we consider the number of stream as a n and uh, area as a a then the stream density will be n by s that is the ratio of number of streams to the area okay well this stream density is also known as the stream frequency the next characteristics is length of the stream well the length measured along the main stream from the basin outlet to the remotest point means to the far point on the basin boundary that is called as the length of the stream or we can say the watershed length now the next is form factor of the basin area which is defined as the ratio of the basin area to the square of its length well the, the shape of drainage basin is generally expressed by this form factor the next is compactness coefficient which is defined as the ratio of the perimeter of the basin to the perimeter of the circle whose area is equal to the basin area the compactness coefficient is independent of the size of the basin and it is mainly dependent on the slope of the basin okay the next is the shape factor shape factor is the ratio of the square of the basin length and the basin area so the square of the basin length the unit will be meter square or the kilometer square same way the area of basin would be meter square or in kilometer square so the shape factor is the dimensional s the next is relief of basin area the relief of the basin area can be defined as the difference in elevation between the highest point on the ridge and the basin outlet okay now talking about the circularity ratio while the basin area those divided by the area of the circle whose perimeter is equal to the length of the ridge line that is known as the circularity ratio the last is the elongation ratio of the catchment area while the elongation ratio of a catchment area can be defined as the diameter of a circle whose area is equal to the basin area and it divided by the length of the basin so that ratio will be considered as the elongation ratio of the catchment area so these all are the drainage basin characteristics okay this all you have to remember okay thank you so much students for your kind attention we are done with today's lecture thank you so much i will see you in the next lecture